It's another week and another brand new episode on the Granny Panty Podcast. I'm your host, Ruby Lynn. If you'd like to follow everything Ruby, please go to Ruby Lynn, R-U-B-Y-L-Y-N-N-E.com. Also, don't forget to click subscribe and like on these videos here at the Granny Panty Podcast. You can also follow on Instagram and Twitter if you'd like. This week's guest is an OG in the industry. She refers to herself as the original BBW cam model and porn star. She's been in this business almost 30 years. I'm excited to hear her story today. So help me welcome Samantha 38G. I'm so excited to have you on the show, Samantha, um, and find out a lot more about you. I actually had a viewer recommend, sent in a note and said, you have to have her on your show. So I'm excited to learn all about you today. Oh, this is fascinating. I love doing podcasts. Awesome. So I, you know, looked up your links page. You have a great website, but tell me about you. I read that you've been in the business 20 years. So oh, I want to hear your whole story. How did I you get been, into it? I've been in this industry in one way or another for almost 34 years. Wow. I started off as a stripper for 12 years. And then I worked in offices and became a manager. And then it, it's just not enough pay there for the amount of hours you work. Right. And I uh, became an online performer. Okay. Which I mean, I became a porn star because that's, that was your options back then. Mm -hmm. I was 30 when I got into porn, when there was nobody over the age of 24, you were considered over the hill at age 25 and you did not see anybody chubby whatsoever, unless it was one of those fuck the pigs on the farm kind of video. Oh, geez. Just the lowest class of humor. Right. Uh, and it was so detrimental to any woman's uh, self-confidence. So I refused to be in those kind of videos. And mm-hmm. I've submitted my uh, pictures to uh, the score group. And I got my first magazine cover. And I have over 25 magazine covers. And I've been in over easily 200 magazines. Wow. So I was the first BBW to become such a glamour puss. And, and to be into porn videos for many sites... I mean, a lot of sites. Um, after my shoot for Score Group, I shot for um, Reality Kings. Oh. Uh, called Big Naturals, in which I was on the front page of Big Naturals for 17 years. Wow. Which is a hard thing to do to be on the front page of any paid site like that, much right. less that long. Right. Um. And so I was the top BBW, number number one BBW for two different companies. The score group, I won Plumper of the Year so many times (laughs) from the guys voting for me (laughs) in Voluptuous Model that they gave me Plumper of the Decade and then the Century. Oh, wow. (laughs) You can't get much higher uh, honor than that. Right? So uh, my, my... Content the big naturals video with the yellow bikini top went viral, so I was one of the first girls to go viral. Um, I've been viral several other times, um, and then uh, I I mean, but just nobody looked like me, right? There was no chubby girls in porn, there was nobody over the age of 24 at the time, and I wasn't an LA person, I was a Miami girl, gotcha. And the Miami companies were, were all internet and they were more willing to take risk. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Where you had the head honchos in the industry in LA who only wanted young, skinny girls and just ripped through them like crazy and threw them mm-hmm. out. But you didn't have camming back then. You didn't have only fans and clips for sale. I mean, a lot of those right. things weren't viable to us. And I always wanted to build my own solo site. But the only way to get my name out there and get to be known was to shoot porn. Gotcha. And so I'm also one of the most shot BBWs in the industry still. And I haven't shot for a company in six years. 
You just asked, you just took the question right out of my brain. I was going to say, when was the last time you shot studio porn? The first company I shot for was the score group. And the last time I shot was for the score group. They're amazing. I shot with them uh, about a year and a half ago. They were great. How they shoot is how I establish it. (laughs) So good or bad, most of it's going to be my fault. (laughs) Because... We were all new, and I just kind of took over one day. So I was like, <laughs> boom, 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 and I changed everything. And Luz, the makeup artist at the time, called me up and was like, Jesus fucking Christ, you got us out of here five hours instead of 12. We love you. <laughs> That's cool. That's awesome. Yeah. How old were you when you How old were 30. you when you got into porn? 30. 30. 30. Okay. Years old, and now I'm 54. Okay. Aren't the 50s amazing? Uh, well, my 40s sucked because I had no energy <laughs> and all I did was sleep. So my 50s are improving. Once I found out I was a diabetic and high blood pressure, now I can control it through right, uh, right. Well, blood pressure. I can't, but the diabetes I control through food and exercise, but mm-hmm. my energy level. But you know what? What's the alternative? Right. To right. Getting it's, older. it's a state of mind. You know, it's either death or you get older. That's right. <laughs> so I'd much rather be alive and kicking. Might as well uh, embrace it rather than fight it. I know it. several ladies that are, I mean, I know a couple of ladies that are in their 70s and they're doing very well. Yeah. Uh, my mom is in her 70s and men hit on her like crazy. <laughs> she was just the bad girl in a country western video. She shot. <laughs> oh my, recently? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So so your longevity in this business is determined by yourself and nobody else. Well, first of all, when you're in your twenties, you have millions of people as competition. Right. And when you hit your thirties, then you still have several hundred thousand as competition. When you get to your forties, it's going to be a few hundred, maybe a thousand. You get to fifties. We got that number even narrower. Yes. (laughs) So even though, People don't think we're popular. We are, but we also have so much less competition. It's amazing. I didn't get into this business till I was 53. So a little over three years ago, I'm Mm -hmm. 56 now. And a lot, you know, as I do interviews and get interviewed, people are like, holy cow, you know, going into it at 53. I'm like, it's amazing. I've actually, you know, in the beginning was shocked at how well I was received I think we get less trolls too. Yeah, I still I get a few. Well, see, I I learned how to make fun of them on live cam so well. Yeah, that it makes me money from other people. That's <laughs> and good. So they, they 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 resent me like taking what they throw at me and turning it into money, That's so they funny. don't troll me anymore. <laughs> and I miss them. <laughs> right. Um, right. But I don't, I mean, one, when, if I'm doing live cam, nobody's going to get in the way of me making money. Mm-hmm. I just have like, this is on kind of mentality. Um, either you can let them affect you, you can block them. Or, I mean, I've converted some of them into my best paying customers. That's awesome. So, I mean, they're only there because they're interested in you. Because they can log on to any live cam site, any right. platform and find Thousands upon thousands of other people they may be interested in. Right. So why are they in your room? If they weren't interested. I feel that same way about Instagram. Um, I have a reputation of a bunch of viral vids. I do these really cringy cleaning vids where I'm braless and I'm shaking the girls. And the trolls come out and I... I actually love it. I always give them the laughing emoji on all their negative comments because it's still engagement. They're still boosting my numbers. Um, I said something on Twitter a few months ago that a lot of people took out of context. Really took out of context. It just went through my juggler and I just laughed at them because it got me 20,000 new followers. Right. So I'm like, hate all you want. One, you took it out of context. But I also know when they pile on like that, mm-hmm. there's no defending yourself because they don't give a shit. Right, right. 
their diatribe of in their what's in their head. So I'm let let them spew. I don't care. Not gonna affect my day. Um, I had a few reach out to me personally in the messages, and they're like, "Did you mean such and such?" And I'm like, "Yeah." And they're like, "Oh, okay." Right. Right. <laughs> you know. But the others, and I'm just like, whatever. <laughs> you know. Because I, cool. I can't change what's going on in their head and right. how they feel about something. Right, right. They're I always person. think it's a reflection on them because their life must not be very happy right now that they have to try to tear somebody I've else down. There's a lot of pile on in a lot of situations that's just not necessary. Right. When they think someone's crossed the line or said something inappropriate or whatever. I like reading the drama. <laughs> but I don't pile in on it. Right. Right. So that's how I take it. So, so what platforms are you on? I'm curious. Uh, for camming or. Any so, of it. I mean, there's so many different ways to make money in this. Right. Industry that fits right. your particular personality. That yeah. So I actually started off as selling dirty panties back three years ago, you know, to make extra money that morphed into live webcam, which morphed into uh, fan sites and then did studio, uh, just a uh, one studio shoot. But I'm mostly on ePlay, um, cam models, OnlyFans, I'm really uh, big on OnlyFans, top 1%. But those are my main platforms. Thank you. But tell me about yours too. I, you mentioned live webcam. Where are you? You well, must have. I'm an, I? I'm an OG cam girl. Okay. <laughs> I was one of the first porn stars to become a cam girl. Wow. 20 something odd years ago. Me and uh, Taylor uh, Stevens. Tay Stevens. Okay. Mm -hmm. She started out as a BBW. So uh, but back then when I started, I started out on I'm Live. I was recruited by another bottle. I started off on I'm Live. Let's see, Tara Patrick was number 15. Wow. She still camps. Uh, Ron Jeremy was number 16. He's in prison as well. He should be. And then me, I was number 17 on the Celebrity Network for I'm Live. Wow. And um, back then the contracts were way different than they are now. Um which I like to think behind the scenes, I helped push those changes because um, I was told I couldn't have contracts changed, and I did. I got Everything's negotiable in life. Everything's negotiable, and it depends on your, your fan base and the power that you have mm -hmm. uh, and how badly the company wants you. So I started off with I'm Live. I was recruited to Naked, and then um, I kept on hearing everybody talk about uh, Streammate, which had only been going for two, three years. And mm -hmm. then the owner called me up of Streammate and he helped me set up my webcam. Nice. So also my free camps, the owner there. <laughs> because at the time, my free camps had an age limit. Oh. I think it was only 35 years old. Wow. And I was already in my 40s. So I talked to the owner there and got the age limit mm -hmm. lifted for me. And then eventually I think they, they lifted the age limit in general. But for right. most campsites, they had an age limit of 35. They only wanted young skinny girls because that's how the industry thought for generations. Right, right. Of what men found attractive. And the internet helped open, widen that. And I broke a lot of those glass ceilings. So I'm OG, <laughs> as we say. That's and great. I heard a friend of mine's husband said he watched a documentary on the Miami porn scene, and they said that I was one of the founders of the Miami porn scene. And I got to thinking about it. I was like, well, yeah, I would be. So and if you only shop for the scoreboard, then you shop for the best company out there. And there's just none other to compare. They were great. Yeah, I had a really... Um amazing time. So where do you cam primarily now? Or do you still cam? I still cam. I cam on Streammate. Okay. Um, I'm when, they had my back during some turbulent times where I was being fucked over by a webmaster. And he tried to get them to fire me. And they stuck by me. And um, even though he was a studio. And then I also cam on Chatterbait. 
Okay. Because Cheddar Bay is just humongous. Yes, it is. I'm there as well. Cheddar Bay is the fifth largest adult site in the industry. Mm -hmm. It has a ton of traffic, a ton of traffic. And while I don't always make the per hour money I do on Streammate, it's a different energy. Yes. And I believe in being able to hustle in different ways because you have to adapt your hustle every every site. Like, right. OnlyFans is going to be a different hustle than Clips or Sell. Clips or Sell is going to be a different hustle from Streammate. Streammate is going to be a different hustle from Chatterbay. Mm-hmm. Um, so I believe in being able to, we're all, in, this is all a sales commission based job. Yes. So I believe in being a good salesperson and being mm-hmm. able to adapt to each site. Now, some sites I've failed on completely, like many vids, could never make a sense of it. And I was pouring hours and hours of work into it, barely putting any work to OnlyFans, but the income I was making on OnlyFans was five times more than yeah. I was making on many vids. And at some point, I'm like, fuck many vids. <laughs> you got to go where the money is. Like I said, everybody has what works best for them. Right. For some people, it's going to be mini vids, whereas for me, it's not. And that's that's how I look at it. No, I agree with you. Mini vids was the very first campsite that I tried because I went from selling the panties, dudes wanted content. I you know, going to be steps in today's market. I could see that. Yeah, and then many vids. I wanted a clip site, and it seemed like the all-in-one. You could cam, you could have your clip site, all that. But I just don't think it works that way for the most part. To tell right you the truth. on any of them, because they all want to be that one-stop place. Right, like you can sell videos and memberships on Streammate, but that just really never took off on that part. Now some probably excel at it, but I can't. I don't seem to do well there. Um, and then you had the fan clubs on Chatterbait. Mm-hmm. And they started Peach, but still. And Which you don't even vids. hear about that anymore, Peach. Right. And then you have mini vids and loyal fans that also have camming on it. Right. I don't hear a lot of people making money on the cams there, except for one or two performers. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's always going to be someone who puts in the work and, and gets the algorithm or whatever. Right, right, right. Um you know, and it also depends. I mean, and then people don't talk about this because they're afraid of pissing off company. Also, depends on who likes you at the company, who the fuck you piss off. I used to say it's not what you know; it's who you blow. That <laughs> might be where that might be where this comes in. Well, I don't know about the blow part because I've never had to do that for a role. And the time I did, I showed up with two mega stars. The, the director freaked the fuck out. Um, because I just didn't know about how ghosties were really supposed to go. So I just showed up with other people, even though I'd have been in the business over 15 years and was like completely naive because I've never, I never had to do that. <laughs> I had what they needed. So, um, yeah, I totally ruined that guy's night. Um, <laughs> but uh, they got him accidentally in trouble with his boss because I'm OG. I know all these people. So, yeah. But, yeah, if you if you piss off somebody at a cam company, they will put you at the bottom of the third page. Right. Right. I believe it can happen. Yes. I, I, I've, I've had it happen. I did a cam con several years ago where I was a speaker at the very last seminar. And oh. they thought nobody was going to show up, so they canceled it. But then all these people piled into the room, and they're like, well, we're here for Sam. And and the people who, who were going on the show were like, well, shit. So they called all the other panelists to come up there. And it was kind of like, again, this one we really don't do those shows anymore at that time because all these people had never either canned or they haven't done it in seven years. Well, they mm-hmm. need not know what it's like for a performer and how to handle right. situations. And they gave the same bullshit answers that is everywhere. They didn't answer people's problems. Like, you know, people are like, well, how do you deal with trolls? Well, I'm like, well, I turn them into my best paying customers. Everybody's like, what? 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 <laughs> That's what I do with them. I don't know a job, but I like them. <laughs> and they're just like, no one had ever said that before. 
<laughs> Maybe that's a book you need to write. How to turn your trolls into your best paying customers. I can see it now. Yeah, maybe you're maybe right there because I was a psych major in college. So there's granted there's that. Um, but I just found it just like you can't give people these answers that they come seeking the right. same stuff they've heard over and over again. Because it's not working if they're still asking that question. Right. And it's assaulting to your audience not to go beyond what you hear everybody else say. And everybody on there was giving me the dirtiest looks on the stage. Okay. And I was like, you ain't nothing. I mean, and then I ended up taking over because <laughs> I'm bossy that way. And then pretty soon they were taking notes. <laughs> but I ended up at the bottom of the third page for stream mate because... <laughs> I know who I pissed off. And I'm like, oh, this is a game. Watch this. Well, maybe you can figure out what's been going on with that site lately. It's been a little crazy. I, think, I mean, I've read about a lot of the technical difficulties and, and then tech support. And I've, and I've dealt with them. And I, I'm not going to sit on something for hours and not make money. Yeah. If I've got the energy up to do my hair, put on makeup, clean my house, I'm making money. Right. Like, that's my attitude. I'm logging on to make money. So I'll switch to Chatterbait. I'll switch over to OnlyFans and work my guys there. I'll do the customs. I'll do mm -hmm. the voicemails. I, I'm making this. I have a mind. I have a certain uh, amount of money when I'm on that I want to make. Okay. I just don't give a shit which side it is. Gotcha. As long as I make that daily goal. Or that goal that day because I don't work every day. That's in my head. So I'm not going to let anything slow me down or stop me. Now, and what is your daily goal? When I work, 500 to 800. Okay. I mean, I know people who make a lot more than me. I'm not the most money making, but I'm also the laziest. 500 to 800 is a good day. <laughs> oh, no, it's a great day. Don't get me wrong. It's a great day. <laughs> um, but I don't do that every day because... Um, work-life balance at this point. Right. How many days a week do you cam? Maybe one or two. Okay. I really don't work that hard anymore. But as you get older, you don't have to work as hard at this job. Mm -hmm. So maybe I just got great clients and I've trained them all well. Either you're training them or they're training you, one or the other. Yeah, I was going to say, where does that come from? Um, because I I work seven days a week, probably 16 hours a day, and in some way, shape, or form on my business. So tell me about how you got to that point where it, I mean, which is great. That's I what we all want. Work, I mean, don't get me wrong. I worked that many hours for many of years. Mm -hmm. Like one girl told another one, you're not going to outwork Sam. Because I used to grind every single day. Mm -hmm. Um, I, how do I put it? I mean, I used to work really hard on camming and it just, especially in 2008 when the bottom fell out of the economy and I was making $20 an hour on naked at that time. And I was making 2000 a week mm -hmm. because I was putting in the hours every day on right, camp. Right. Right. And then they called, well, they did a thing where they were going to lower how much percentage they paid everybody. Wow. And at the time I was making 54%. And they everybody knew they they dropped down to 25% instead of 35%. And I was like, oh no, 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 no. Yeah. That's just wrong. And you're fucking up. This is wrong. And um, I stopped camming on them and I switched over to Streammate when my first hour I made 300 Wow. And I've shut down servers. <laughs> but now cam server it's like servers in the beginning a lot of times especially on naked they're like put your titties away you shut down the servers <laughs> <laughs> i would get a call put your kids away <laughs> that's awesome that's awesome um, streaming i think they're just they're trying to be more i mean and a lot of these sites are so we're going to have a lot of tech issues for the next couple of years everybody wants to be only fans because what OnlyFans has done has been a rocket straight to the moon. You have to understand, 
before OnlyFans, only a handful of people in the porn industry as a performer made a million dollars over their entire career. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're talking a handful of people like Ron Jeremy, uh, Jenna, Jenna Jameson, Tara mm-hmm. Patrick. I don't know about but Tara probably. But only these people, I mean, only a handful of performers. Right. Had, and that's over a career. Not a year or a month even. Right. <laughs> you know, we were all replaceable. I don't know how many times I've heard porn directors and company owners tell us we're all replaceable, including a lot of the campsites used to trash us on the industry boards. Uh, I changed that too and got them to all to shut up when I let all the girls know what they were doing. Um, so that stopped. Um, gotcha. But they all want to be OnlyFans. OnlyFans had in the three years ago, over 300 performers were making a million dollars a year. Right, right. And the company made $5 billion. I think last year they made $8 billion. Now, before that, Pornhub and all the sites it owns, all the sites it devoured, Brazzers and all those sites they own, the most made $345 million a year, and they were the biggest company. $345 million. And then OnlyFans, Leo pops up. <laughs> and he made five billion and everybody i guess i remember on the exhibit board everybody went what well i wish they'd take some of that money and update that site to a little bit more user friendly they have over 80 billion guys on there it's like come on let's what, they, update he, it. he had he owns my free camps how often does he update that site sometimes right. don't fix what's not broken if the model is working yeah. I do see improvements on OnlyFans. I do see. And they do have glitches. But as long as these people are making, as they try to evolve these sites, there's going to be these glitches. Right. right. I mean, right. I've worked in regular businesses and had the computer shut down at least once or twice a year and everybody's scrambling to find an old cash register. Um, you know, to me, that's just a part of doing business. Right. As it evolves and grows. So I don't get so upset about it. Mm-hmm. But I understand some people have made these sites their one and only income. And that's why I always recommend there's some diversify. Oh, yeah. Diversify for sure. Yeah. I mean, have a main site and then have backup sites. Mm-hmm. You know, but I mean, just because I'm not on camera doesn't mean I don't work. Right, right. Uh, the, there's the behind the scenes stuff is what's so time intensive. That's what I spend more time on because <laughs> I've learned the more I like pack that stuff in, the more money I'm going to make for less hours on camera. Right. So, I, I mean, today in the tub, I watched three tutorials. One on marketing, one on how to gain YouTube system uh, and how to make YouTube videos that because that's Apple cool on mm-hmm. all videos um, and social media sites and one on editing. That's awesome. Yeah. Learning. I mean, in this industry, I learn something different every week. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I watch 10 hours a week of tutorials on average. Wow. That's awesome. Because it's that sometimes success is just one small little tweak away. Mm -hmm. That's true. And, and the algorithms of, are always changing. And right, I've helped a lot of models go from no money to making good money and be able to support themselves and their families just by one tweak. Like one girl, like your background's washing you out and you need a brighter lipstick and a bright necklace. She did that and she started making money. So it wasn't that she wasn't working hard enough. It wasn't like she wasn't putting in the effort. Small little tweaks. Yes. Yes. So I'm always watching for that small little tweak that can help me. And that's why I don't have to be on camera as much. <laughs> so tell me about your uh, content now. You're on OnlyFans. Do you shoot with other creators or is it all solo? 99% solo. Okay. I have two hardcores. One, I can't find half the content on. And I just don't like the guy anymore. So it's hard for me. And I shot it four or five years ago. Mm-hmm. And then I have one threesome I shot last year, and I've yet to use it. 
um, because I can recycle the other four shoots I've done and keep okay. like, running money off of them. Um, I usually titty stuff because I'm known for my boobs. Mm-hmm. Um, jerk off instructions, of course. Armpits, the belly lovers, <laughs> giant test lovers. I mean, I have and I have great feet. I have incredible feet. So I'm lucky that I have the body I do. Mm-hmm. You know, and then plus being mature. Yeah. Do you have any pro shoots scheduled or are you shooting pro anymore? I haven't shot okay. a couple of years. And I just, just so much, how do I put it? Baggage. Okay. I don't know how shoots are, but I just, for listening for two decades of them tell us that we're all worthless. We've charged too much money. Uh, we should all be blowing everybody's dicks, trying to force us into doing anal. Uh, the, the speech that you get when you first get on set, even though you were on time and prepared, all girls are lazy, fucking whores, drug addicts, drunks, ever, nobody shows up on time. And it's just so much negativity thrown at you in the first 30 minutes you show up to set in order to bring women's self-confidence down so they can get them to do acts that they don't want to do, so they can get them to take less money. All that grooming is just too much trauma for me, okay. and I'm just too old for me to tolerate it because I'm going to be like, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, and I'm going home. <laughs> do you think that's still going on today, though, in today's I, set? I, well, I mean, I saw the directors change and be grateful that people show up. And I've told some of them off on social media, like, well, maybe nobody's showing up to your shoots because you're an asshole. (laughs) Then there's that. (laughs) (laughs) And how you treat people is shitty. And why would they want to come back for more for that? Right. You know, I was like, it also depends. Like, you're hiring people. I was like, I used to be in management. You interview people to see if they're going to show up. If they're going to be a good employee, if they're going to be sober. I was like, y'all don't interview anybody. You just go based upon their looks and that's it. And whether or not you want to talk them. And that's the only qualification. So you're getting what you hire. So that means you're bad at hiring people. So stop being mad at a hundred girls. If you can't find a good employee out of a hundred, maybe it's you. And that pissed off a lot of the cam bosses and producers and directors. They tell me go get a fast food job. I'm like, one of these days, these girls are going to turn it around. Is this going to happen? <clears throat> I push and pull behind the scenes for that to happen. Mm-hmm. For women to not just shoot porn, to be independent contractors. And got some of the biggest names to go to Clips for Sale, to Cam. So that their income wasn't just based upon paid shoes. So I pushed and pulled a lot behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. There was a site that gave... I knew this was coming and I predicted it seven years ago that this would happen, that it would flip. So I don't know what it's like on sets anymore. Okay. I still have all that emotional damage. <clears throat> I just don't want to hear that shit no more. So gotcha. I just, it's just too, too much trauma for me. Um, except for scoreboard. But I'm just so excited for the other performers coming up. Have you ever thought about developing your own coaching program? Based on all your knowledge. Most people who need it the most don't have the money. So the people I've coached, I've just done for free. Mm-hmm. You know, and then they go on to give my same advice and be coaches and tell other people. But I, uh, I, the people who can, who least can afford it are the ones that are being preyed upon, I think. Okay. That's how I look at it. The people mm-hmm. who need them and... But other people coming up and even surpassing me only forces me to be more creative. Mm-hmm. It's about my game. So, you know, by giving people the pieces of information that help them, it's like, well, shit, now I got to fucking <laughs> tweak my game. <laughs> so, I mean, because I remember being so new and there was mm-hmm. searching the web and there was just no information anywhere on anything Mm -hmm. on anything i mean of course it's back when they had aol news and yahoo groups right (laughs) dial up yeah and i was doing dial up there was just no information 
But I mean, look what how many people are making a, a living and supporting themselves and are left such abusive relationships because of all the information out there to help them grow. Right, right. And I just, I just feel bad. Many blogs and YouTube channels these days and podcasts giving information. I listen to them. I learn something new. Um, so I think, yeah. I think we're seeing the stratification in this business. Okay. Of people filling in those, those things that mm -hmm. we, that was needed for, for at least three decades. And we've seen, I've seen that happen in the last 10 years. Okay. So knowing, knowing what you do now, what would you go back and tell your 18 year old self or even 25 year old self? You know, nothing. Because all lessons are learned the hard way. Right. <laughs> and you can't avoid them. Because right. if you don't know, then you go on to make even better ones and falls. Um, so nothing, because you know what you know what you need to know at that time. I'm mm -hmm. a big believer in that. Okay. Um, you know, I started off as a stripper, you know. Um, there's just nothing you can, I, I don't know. What about you? Would you say something to your younger self? Oh, I think I'd say a lot of things. <laughs> Like quit caring what other people think. That was my biggest thing is that I for my, my late 30s. So, yeah, up until about, you know, 41, I was always trying to make everybody else happy. And I did what everyone thought I should do. And yeah, I think camming is what changed that for me in it and, 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 and moved that forward quickly because. I was doing what the cam companies told me to do. In fact, you used, there used to be fines, which you can't tell them what they can do with that fine <laughs> because that's illegal in the United States. I'm <laughs> like, you took what? Because I told a customer to fuck off out of my check. <sighs> well, I'm not going to argue with you about this. We'll just go to the, you know, what is that board for, uh, for pay? Um, labor board. Oh, labor. Yeah. Labor board. And they were like, what? I'm like, yeah, because you just can't find people on their chat. So let's just take it up with the labor board and let them figure this shit out. And they're like, here's your money. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Some of the campsites rightly do hate me because um, they used to do that often to performers. Uh -huh. If you weren't nice, no matter how ugly the person was to you. Wow. You had to be nice and sweet and accommodating, no matter how ugly this person was being to you. And it wasn't until I realized, fuck you, fuck this, fuck that, just told them how I really thought that I started making money. Gotcha. Oh. So it wasn't until I got honest that I started making money. Mm -hmm. And the guys were like, well, that's authentic. That yeah. sounds like women I know. <laughs> that's when I started making money. Okay. But even in my interviews for Score Group, um, they they you know they gave asked you the questions and I just told them reality and they're like, oh, mm -hmm. you can't say that. You have to be this. You have to be the whore that wants to fucking suck everybody. I'm like, because that's not happening. <laughs> I was like, you're setting me up to be hard. Uh, -uh. and they took a chance and they wrote my real answers and mm -hmm. they got such a response from the readers. Because this is when magazines were huge. Uh -huh. They got a response from the readers going, now that's a real interview. That's a real person. And they right. connected okay. with me. And I have to say, I am so blessed and lucky that I have fans for over 25 years. That is Even great. my fans from stripping come and find me and say hi. People I knew in person back in the day. So I, I have, I look at this as royalties. <laughs> Right, right. I'm just going to look the work at it. I've done. Yeah. So I've laid the groundwork and I have generations of guys who are like, I mean, some of the guys I've even dated is like, your magazine's one of my first magazines. I used to steal them out of the store. I got into porn because of you. That's amazing. So, oh, I mean, it's an amazing journey. I have, I mean, 
the negative parts about the business have changed. Yeah. And, and one of the things for score group, they were, were in the lunchroom and they were like, well, you can't do this. You can't do that. You can't say this. This is how the business is. And I just looked right at them. And I'm like, watch me change it. And this is like my fourth shoot. And I just looked right at them. And I'm like, watch me change it all. <laughs> do you have any big projects or what are you working on this year? What do you have coming up? You know, it's, I would love to learn after effects and be more creative with my filming. Okay. That's been a dream of mine for a long time, but there's just, sometimes there's mental blocks of actually sitting down and learning stuff because I have a huge learning curve. Um, even though the technology has gotten easier and, and there's better <laughs> tutorials out there, uh, I don't quite always get my vision of what it's in my head onto the screen. Okay. And that frustrates me. And a lot of times my artsy fartsy stuff just does not sell. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've had that happen too. Yeah. So they were just like heavy. You know, here's a quick video of my phone, of my phone shaking my titties. And that just <laughs> takes me two minutes to do goes crazy. It makes me lots of money. Right. I spent hours upon hours planning and purchasing and planning and setting up and shooting flops. So some, I like I had those aspirations, but then I'm practical and realize you're doing this for your own ego and not them. Ah, that's a good analogy. It reminds me of a joke that Jeff Foxworthy said. He goes, men are simple. They want two things. See some titties and a beer. <laughs> there you go. If the titties can bring them beer, that's the best yet. The men want two things, titties and beer. <laughs> and so I remind myself, keep it simple. Yeah. You know, keep it simple. I think people being their authentic selves mm -hmm. works for me. Other girls do characters. I'm, the, I'm me. Um, right. That's also the beauty of it. It's like there's so many different ways to approach it and make money that's within your comfort zone. Yeah, for sure. For sure. You know, that's the beauty of the industry. Awesome. So many different ways to make money, to go at it. There's no one right or wrong path for each of us. Right. Right. So I don't like it when people like, Oh, so-and-so is this or that. I don't, I don't, that's another reason why I don't get involved with other people. Mm -hmm. I don't want to know anything about their personal lives because I don't want to gossip. And all that drama is just so much extra energy spent on what? Right, right. It's not making you any money. You know, um, we don't need to tear each other down. Right. If we, as we found out, there's so much money out there for all of us. And as I said, the world's not running out of horny men. <laughs> no. <laughs> the world's never going to run out of horny men. Um, <laughs> That's awesome. And, the fact that, I mean, the industry still fascinates me mm -hmm. and how it's evolved and changed and how so many people who aren't the cookie cutter blonde with huge skinny tits, skinny mm -hmm. girls with huge tits and are 18 years old. You know, there's, just, there's so much room for all of us. And we have to bless men for having such a variety of taste in women. There you go. I love it. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, so, you were so old to get in it at, at, in your 50s. I mean, what was the final push for you? Ah, uh, the final push for me, I'd always been very sexual, had been in the swing lifestyle for, you know, well, at that point, like 12, 13 years. Mm -hmm. And it was really about money and expression. And I was a social worker. So I worked a corporate job as a social worker. It was completely burned out. And I just wanted to find ways to make more money. And so that initially was my drive. And then, you know, my kink was to be watched. So where else to be in front of a camera I and get paid for it? I want to be an exhibitionist in the safest way possible. But the exhibition of it is it. It's awesome. Like, I love yeah, it is. being an exhibitionist now. <laughs> Well, as we close out the show, um, I love to ask all of my guests for a granny panty tip of the week. So what is one 
tip that you would give anybody getting into the industry? It can be about anything. There's so much information out there mm -hmm. and so many blogs and so many tutorials that uh, even the sites have tutorials these days, which that took a lot of pushing and pulling on my end have happened, that that information is invaluable mm -hmm. and that you're going to learn a lot more than you thought you needed to know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, when I started, people, and I wanted to build my own website, nobody would give me information. I went to X Biz Miami, mm -hmm. and nobody would, they were just like, I literally heard this line all you need to do is sit there and look pretty. Oh. I heard that many a times, and I wrote X Business seething the email because of it. Uh, and if they want a copy of it, I probably still have it. Um, I wrote because it was so condescending. So, Learn as much as you can, and you're going to have to learn about photography, lighting, modeling, angles, editing, <laughs> marketing. I mean, there's so much more to learn, and think of it as a fun challenge. Yeah. Not drudgery, but a fun challenge. Like, I'm going to conquer this. Well, yeah, and life after this, I mean, I was thinking about this the other day. If everything imploded and I had to go back to work for somebody else, well, I sure as heck ain't doing social work again. Right. <laughs> but I could be, I could work for a marketing company. I could be an editor. I mean, there's just so many things we can do. But You learn so many more skills than you think you needed to learn. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I happen to love learning, so it's okay. But you learn so many more things than you thought you needed to do. But yeah, that condescending, you need just to look pretty and that's it. That's literally that's what I was told at my first industry uh, event that I went to. Crazy, crazy. Well, wow. like hopefully times have changed. Huh? They hopefully have. times have changed. They have changed. But. Well, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to come on and chat with me today. Um, this has been great. Tell our viewers where they can find you. Onlysam38g.com. Oh, and best advice ever, buy your domain, buy your name. So you there you go. Buy your name. Um, so Onlysam38g.com, sam38g.com, samantha38g.com. <laughs> Um, yeah, if you type in my name.com, you're pretty much going to get me. Okay. I've, I've worked really hard on my SEO. All things Samantha. I love it. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you again. Before I did my first shoot. That's good. That's smart. Smart. But, well, thank you again. I had a great time listening to um, how you got started and how that all evolved. And so I am looking forward to seeing what comes in the future for you as you just keep growing and educating. And I love it. Thanks again.